Hello, my name is Shannon Kringen, and I'm going to do a video monologue. Now, I'm in my bikini, so if you're uncomfortable with body positiveness, then turn the video off. But if you're okay with me sharing that I'm in my bikini, and I'm not doing this to, well, I'm doing this for a variety of reasons. I'm doing this to celebrate curves, to celebrate being a natural human being. If I, if I could be nude, I would be. I make a living as a figure model for art classes, so I'm used to being around artistic people who are comfortable drawing and painting the nude figure. I also work with medical students. I pretend to be a patient, and I let medical students, uh, they hire men and women both to be examined by medical students and act as a patient and to give medical students feedback on the palpation physical techniques they have for medically examining somebody, as well as verbal language, uh, medical language. Students, Medical students need to learn how to use proper medical language with their patients to make the patients very comfortable and keep in a professional environment. And here I am in my bikini so this is me, 47, Shannon Kringen, live in Seattle, Washington, USA. And here I am. I eat healthy and I exercise, though I would like to be a little bit more lean and fit. I was leaner and fitter for a little while. <laughs> then I dated. I started dating somebody who likes to cook amazing meals. So <laughs> I've gained a little bit of weight back. But I wanted to do a video today about a variety of topics. It is now May 4th, 2016. I'm an American citizen. I am a huge fan of Bernie Sanders and the reason why is because I like his ethics and his values. Being a democratic socialist is something that I am inspired by. Um, democracy and capitalism can work hand in hand, side by side. But when you have capitalism that's unregulated, then corporations are allowed to not pay taxes and wages are kept low. Then capitalism can actually contribute to people suffering and living in poverty. So what Bernie Sanders represents to me is somebody who cares about the poor, the middle class, the uh, wealth income inequality, and the fact that health care mixed with capitalism, you know, health care is a public service and should not be part of our capitalist system. Like when you go to the shopping mall and you want to buy a luxury item and you pay a lot of money for it, that's fine if you can afford it. But when you go to the doctor and you simply want health care, I don't think that should be like going to the shopping mall. And some people even think it should be like competitive, like the shopping mall and doctors can have a two for one sale and all this kind of stuff like at a shopping mall and get the best deal. I agree that healthcare should be competitive and affordable, but I don't think it should be like a capitalist type enterprise, like not like a business. You know, I don't consider myself a customer of a doctor. I consider myself a patient, a public person who needs services, goods and services. So... I'm trying to figure out why so many people like Donald Trump. I can hardly listen to what he says, but I've heard bits and pieces. And I have a feeling that some of the people that like him, perhaps it's true, they, they're, they're okay with hatred and racism and thing, negative things like that. But I actually think on a more positive note, I, I am not a fan of Donald Trump. Just to make that clear, I'm not a fan of his. But I'm trying to have compassion for people who like him and figure out what is it that, that they like about him. I think that people are attracted to Donald Trump because he appears to have a lot of confidence. And people do like people that have confidence. I think he has a certain kind of charisma. I think that people that admire Donald Trump, they think of him as a successful business person. They think of him as having audacity of being rebellious, of having this um, American 
individualist idea that you can pick yourself up by your bootstraps and work hard to make a lot of money. There's nothing wrong with thinking you can work hard to make a lot of money. What's weird to me is that some of the people that, you know, unless you're wealthy, why would you vote for Donald Trump? Because he wants to give tax breaks. He wants to actually expand the tax breaks that wealthy people get. So thus helping wealthy people become even more wealthy. He wants to give the freedom to the corporations. See, that's the part of capitalism I don't like, is when you give corporations and wealthy people the freedom to abuse their freedom, not pay taxes and hoard all the money, it deprives middle class and low and poor people, low income people. It deprives those people, most of the population actually, are middle class and low income. Those people get deprived of upward mobility. So being against, Donald Trump apparently is against unions. He is against people, the minimum wage being raised. The United States federal minimum wage, I think, is only $7.25 or $7.50 an hour in 2016. I made $7.50 an hour in 1994. So really, to me, minimum wage should be 15 to 20 bucks an hour minimum right now in 2016 to keep up with inflation. So the reason why I'm not a Hillary Clinton fan is because she seems way too conservative for me. She's okay with fracking. She thinks minimum wage could be raised maybe to 12 bucks an hour, but not 15. I'm not sure what Donald Trump thinks about the minimum wage, but I know he's not a fan of unions. He's not a fan of, it's just, it's just weird to me that why anyone that's low income or middle class would be a fan of Donald Trump, other than they like that he's kind of rebellious, kind of a smart aleck, kind of does whatever he wants, doesn't care what anyone else thinks. But the United States of America is supposed to be democratic. So if you have a leader in office that doesn't care about what other people think, that's not democracy. Unless you fully love his ideas, you're not going to like what he's doing. So to me, democracy means that everyone should be able to vote and that the rich, the middle class, and the poor should all have some kind of power, not just the wealthy. So this makes no sense to me. I, I just can only imagine that maybe it's because people respond again to his Donald Trump's entrepreneurial, rebellious, individualistic, you know, the sort of quintessential American, I'm going to go it alone and do my own thing and screw what everyone else thinks. <laughs> so I can sort of understand it just from that perspective. I don't understand the actual reality of what he believes in. I'm a fan of Bernie Sanders because he wants the wages to be raised. He wants health care to be nonprofit and for all, like they have in most other countries already. Public education could be funded. The military budget could be lowered. And the salaries of CEOs and upper management can be lowered. And the wages of the middle and low income can be raised. Basically, we could have more of a real democracy if the poor and the middle class had as much power as the wealthy. So the, in, in the United States, the wealthy and the corporations have the most power, and this is unfair and it's not democratic. So to me, democratic socialism is more democratic than capitalistic um, democracy. See, in, in the United States, we have, we're supposedly a democracy, but capitalism has gotten so out of control, we need to have more regulations to protect the low income and the middle class. And that's why I love Bernie Sanders. He cares about the environment. He cares about minorities. He cares about mentally ill people. He, he cares about the people that are disenfranchised, the poor people the elderly people, the mentally ill, the, the veterans of war. He cares about, he has real ethics and real values, the civil rights movement, equality, equal pay for women. He cares about these kinds of things. Hillary might say some good things about some of these issues I'm talking about, but she's very, very conservative and moderate about it and doesn't think we can really change things very much. And she's okay with fracking, which is very bad for the environment. She's okay with taking money from the fossil fuel industry. She's okay with the status quo being the way it is and maybe just helping improve things just a little bit. 
just a little bit. And she's extremely wealthy herself and is a smart businesswoman with money, which is fine. I, I think Hillary Clinton, I would love to have a female president, but I want her to be radical. I want her to be more socialized. I want her to be, you know, the only thing I really love about Hillary is that she's a strong woman, which I admire. A strong woman is a good thing. She believes in a woman's right to choose for health care for women. That's fine. Abortion rights, birth control rights. That's great. But I don't like her ideas about war and Wall Street and tax breaks for the millionaires. Uh, she's just way too conservative for me. So she goes along with what the bankers want. So I think Hillary should just go ahead and be a CEO and work in a bank. Go ahead and be a high powered business person that makes a lot of money because that's what she's good at. Bernie Sanders, to me, seems to be somebody who is not, he's one of the few politicians that acts like politicians should act. I love Elizabeth Warren as well. He's not in it to get rich and famous and have a lot of power. He's in it because he wants to serve the public. To me, Bernie Sanders seems like somebody who's truly there to serve the public, to help us get wages higher, to help us get health care that's not for profit. I mean, the United States of America spends so much money on health care, and yet we don't give our people health care. I am lucky. I'm low income, and I live in Washington State, and I have what's called Apple Care, which is kind of like a version of Medicaid for low income people, and I have no copay. So I have no medical bills, although I'm very healthy and hardly ever need to go to the doctor. But apparently, if I needed to go to the doctor more, I actually have a little bit of an ear infection right now. And I'm happy to say that I was able to see a naturopathic physician on my health care doctor's list, and there was no bill for me. So this is just part of my taxes, apparently. So that's the way I think the health care system should work in the United States of America, is that we could spend less per capita than we're already spending and give everybody health care if we would not allow price gouging. Pharmaceutical companies are allowed to charge like $500 for medication that in other countries costs like 10 to 20 to 50 bucks. So in the United States, there's no regulations against drug uh, medication pharmaceutical companies charging huge amounts of money. In other countries, they don't allow that kind of thing. So to me, the government should be about regulating and keeping costs low. And there's the whole for-profit insurance companies, like health insurance should have nothing to do with your job and nothing to do with whether you're married or not. Health insurance, health care, single payer health care would be nonprofit and it would be ensuring every single American, young and old, healthy and sick, rich and poor, middle class, the full spectrum of humanity, even homeless people should be able to go to the doctor. So that's like more civilized and humane. And, and the reality in the United States of America is that most of the money goes to the military and to war and to bailing out banks and Wall Street. And this is very unfair. So the reason why I love Bernie Sanders is because he has ethics. He's there serving the public, not just the wealthy people in the corporations. He cares about the environment. He respects Native American wisdom in terms of taking care of the earth and honoring the treaties of Native Americans. Uh, he is not a big fan of war. I also love Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter was one of the few United States presidents that wasn't a huge fan of war and bombing people. Because when you bomb people, it doesn't lessen terrorism. In fact, I believe when the United States invades other countries and bombs people, it only stirs up fear and anger and makes people in other countries angry with the United States and wanting to have revenge or attack us back or just simply not trust us and think that we're really horrible people. So war and terrorism feed each other. To me, a war is legal terrorism and terrorism is illegal war. So basically it's very similar. You might have a, a better reason for killing people when you're inflicting war upon people. You're trying to kill the bad people. But does anybody really deserve to be bombed? I'm not sure. I think there are a few sociopaths in the world that want to do crazy violent things. But I think most human beings are more reasonable than that. Most human beings just want food, shelter, clothing, basic the basic right to survive. So I also wish humans were not so us and them. We are this, you are that, us and them. 
So I think the reason why some people like Donald Trump, aside from all the horrible reasons to like him, which I don't agree with, the only positive reason I can think of liking Donald Trump is that he, he's a symbol of being independent, rebellious, entrepreneurial, individualized in his ideas. You know, he's just like, hey, man, like kind of like a John Wayne kind of American figure of I'm going to be innovative and do my own thing and not follow what anybody else wants. So that's the only positive thing I see about him. And the fact that he's sort of charismatic, people respond. I don't even know if they care what he says. They just like his attitude, his sort of like audacity, you know, and then Hillary again, I love that she's a woman, but she doesn't appeal to me because she's so conservative. She's very pro-war. She's very pro-banks. She's very pro-fracking. She's she's not, you know, Bernie is more into let's do solar power. Let's do, let's have less war. Let's be more diplomatic. Let's talk to other countries. I'm not a fan of religion, but I'm happy that Bernie was invited to go to the Vatican because he cares about economic justice. And the Pope, the new current Pope in 2016, I forgot his name. I'm not really a religious person at all. I'm very non-religious, but very spiritual. Let's just say I believe that we're all connected on this planet. I was raised by two very open-minded parents. My parents are definitely more conservative than I am, but they're both very liberal and they're both very, they taught me. They didn't raise me with religious dogma. They taught me to think for myself. They taught me to question everything and use my common sense. And so I'm very lucky that I was taught that. I was also taught by my parents are very educated and they taught me about nutrition and health. So I was raised eating very healthy foods and I wasn't allowed to eat tons of candy all the time, although I had my fair share of candy as a child. But I'm just saying what my background is. I'm an only child of parents who divorced when I was four. And I was just raised in a certain way of questioning everything. So this is, I'm Shannon Kringen. You're watching Goddess Kring. Here's what I look like. I'm in my bikini because I am there. I work as a model for artists. I've done this full time since 1997. I started modeling for artists in 1992. So I'm just giving you some of my background information. I did a public access show uh, in Seattle for 15 years called Goddess Kring. I'm in a couple documentaries. There's one called Channeling Yourself that hopefully will be out in sometime in 2016. There's one that's already out that's free to watch online called Typecast Dragon. Typecast my dragon sleeps. Monkey moon coming soon. Phases of seeing the gray balloon is part of one of my poems. I write poetry. I do abstract painting. And I am a really... Um, I love cameras and I'm a good photographer. I, I have a background in design. I'm really good with color and design and composition and shape. So I'm just, I'm just rambling about myself right now. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this, this is what I'm thinking about Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton and those people. Again, I'm a big Bernie Sanders fan. I'm trying to have more compassion for people who, who like Hillary Clinton and who I love that she's a woman. And I love that she's strong and I think she's handling the criticism pretty well, but I just am sorry that to say that her ethics just don't, they're not good enough for me. So I want high ethics and I feel like Donald Trump is rebellious and has audacity and I can see why some people like him on that level. But again, the hatred and the bigotry and the racism, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, and the lack of concern for the environment really offends me and upsets me and scares me, quite frankly. So because this planet Earth, whether you're an atheist or a religious person, to me, it's a no brainer that we should that humans should take care of the planet, because if we destroy the planet Earth, then we're all going to die. So to me, it doesn't matter if you believe in God or you believe that the universe is a random accident. I, I believe in order and chaos. I don't believe in religious God in the sky who judges us at all. I'm not religious in that way. But I do believe that we're all connected and that the universe is conscious and that we, we are consciously creating and that there is a spiritual energy that connects all life. I do believe that. I do feel that in my heart. And I feel, in my opinion, I'm very spiritual and I love animals and plants and I want, I have compassion and I want to help people. I want to help um, 
homeless people, plants, animals, uh, mentally ill people. I believe I'm a humanitarian. I believe in as well as environmental. I recycle everything. I compost. I try to eat as organic as I can for my own health and for the health of the planet. I'm not a fan of Monsanto. That's another thing I don't like about Hillary Clinton is she's okay with Monsanto. Roundup is a known carcinogen. So it's like Roundup, uh, Monsanto is not a company in GMO. It, those are not things I'm fans of. Bernie Sanders, I don't know what Donald Trump thinks about GMO, but I have a feeling he doesn't really care about that. So he probably thinks, who cares? Let Monsanto make tons of money. Who cares? So that's something I don't admire. And Hillary Clinton is okay with Monsanto as well. Bernie Sanders seems to be the only guy running for president who is pro-organic food, organic farmers, pro-raising wages for uh, the poor and the middle class, pro-making corporations and churches and wealthy individuals pay their fair share of taxes, pro-lowering the cost of health care by giving everybody nonprofit health care. So these are some of the values that I care about. A woman's right to choose, you know, honoring the treaties with the Native Americans, or the Native American Indians. I mean, these are ethics. These are values. And he's been doing this for like many years. I mean, I, I've heard about, I've known about Bernie Sanders for at least 30 years. I remember in the 80s, when I was like a teenager in the 80s, I'm 47 right now. I graduated from high school in 1986 and I already knew who Bernie Sanders was way back then. I just knew who he was because I always like saw like C-SPAN videos or whatever of him on cable TV and he was always like the politician up there speaking and saying, hey people, and he was speaking out in an ethical way and standing up to people who were in denial about the corruption. And he's always been somebody who, since I was a teenager, who's all, I always admire, I was like, yeah, I like that guy. He's like speaking up, you know, for the disenfranchised, for the minorities, for the underdog. He's for the underdog. He also had the guts to say, perhaps Palestine and Israel, perhaps there's a little too much violence on the Israeli side, and perhaps, you know, it's hypocritical to be very violent and that violence on both sides is wrong and bad and horrible and we need to figure out how to have more peace in the region and not just have one side blame the other each side blames the other and him and Jimmy Carter Bernie Sanders and Jimmy Carter both have had the guts to say hey maybe the violence inflicted by Israel is really like not helpful to the peace process obviously it's not helping violence doesn't help bring peace to anyone even if you say, oh, but we have to get those bad people because those bad people are bad people and we have to defend ourselves from the bad people. But if you go around killing lots of people that you say are bad, then you become bad yourself. See, that's the thing is it's you get out of you get you get out of control with your power. I believe in building up the good things in the world more than trying to destroy all the bad things. So, and it, the truth is, if human beings would stop this us and them thing, then they wouldn't be bombing each other in the first place, which is sad. So, but I know some people say Bernie Sanders is pie in the sky. His ideas are too amazing and too idealistic. And it's really sad. It's like, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Imagine, you know, by, by John Lennon. So there it is. Some of his ideas, Bernie Sanders' ideas are very idealistic and amazing, but a lot of his ideas are very practical. And people thought slavery would never end, and it did. People thought women could never vote, and they can vote. Things do change. Apartheid in South Africa, people probably thought that would go on forever, and that ended. So basically, things can change. Things can improve. And I'm also a big fan of, of Susan Sarandon for speaking out about the fact that Hillary ain't really so much better than some of those Republicans. So just because, you know, if Bernie doesn't get to be the main nominee, you're not just going to automatically vote for Hillary just because she's the lesser of two evils. I want something better than the lesser of two evils. Why do we have to have two evils in the first place? So basically, I'm just sharing with you why I like Bernie Sanders more than anyone else running for president at this point. And Jill Stein, I also like Jill Stein. She's a Green Party candidate. So there, there I am again for people who want to see that. And if you are offended by me and my bikini, I'm sorry. And you might want to question why you're uncomfortable with, with body, with bodies. So again, I'm a nude model for a living. And so I'm, 
I'm kind of, uh, maybe I take for granted that I'm around people that are comfortable with the human anatomy, being nude or in a bodysuit. And I'm also around medical students who are also very pretty comfortable with the human body and palpating the tissue and feeling the lymph nodes and examining the body from head to toe and talking openly about the different body parts. You know, the genitalia, the lymph nodes, the breasts, the anus, the vagina, the penis, all of that. Honesty about the body, but okay, there it is. So that's my ramble. I am Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen. Thank you for listening. More later. Thank you. Please follow your heart and follow your dreams. Believe in yourself. Do what you love and what you care about. And yeah, I want, I want to say that I'm very, very grateful for my life, for my career as a model. I also do focus groups. I do surveys. I am paid mostly to model for art and medical students, but I also get paid to do focus groups. I belong to different companies. I'm on the list of different companies and I, uh, it's private what they send me out to do. They just like, you know, different focus groups at different companies. And we talk about different um, products and companies and services. And then they, they pay us to give feedback and do research and test products and stuff like that. So I do some of that to make ends meet as well. I am low income. And actually, it's in my best interest. That's another thing that bothers me about our system in the United States of America, although I'm doing fine, but a lot of people aren't. I know how to live really cheap. Actually, if I made more money than I do now, my health care costs would go way up. So it's actually easier for me to survive if I stay low income. Although I work really hard, I work probably sometimes seven days a week. I'm constantly, you know, reaching out to get modeling gigs and really good at it and I work really hard and um, I'm just saying that I don't even know how to make a lot of money actually I'm not opposed to making more money as long as I'm doing what I believe in but the sad truth is that in the United States if you're low income then you can qualify for Obamacare I don't know what it's like in other states I live in Washington State USA so I qualify for health care low income health care and I get a good deal but if I made more money, my health care might be several hundred dollars a month, which is not affordable to me. So, And I also rent from a landlord who charges less than market rate. So I'm very, very grateful for my renting situation, for my health care situation. Uh, I'm single. I live by myself. I have a boyfriend, but we don't live together. I mean, these are just some of my, I, you know, I shop at the thrift store. I shop at Costco. I go to the food bank. I love Trader Joe's. I mean, I find low income ways of surviving. If I paid full price for everything, I wouldn't be able to afford to live in Seattle in the United States of America. So you have to beat the system. You have to be very crafty to survive in the United States of America. It's very competitive. Unless you're wealthy, it's very competitive. It's very dog eat dog. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of stressful. And there's a lot of uh, workaholicness in this country. So I am a workaholic actually. So, but I mostly like that, but I have to make sure to get more rest and balance out my leisure time with my work time and take more holidays. I do try to go to Europe. I have friends I stay with in Europe. I know how to get good deals on airline tickets and I just drink water and I kind of tough it out and I just eat out of grocery stores. So I know how to go to Europe and travel really, really cheap, but it is very difficult. And I, but I do it because I love to travel and see other countries. So these are just some of my ideas. Okay. So my advice to you is to listen to your heart and your, your wise mind and do what you love. Do more of what you love and question everything and think for yourself. Don't let other people tell you how you should think. Think for yourself. Pay attention to your own personal experiences and how they affect you. And then make choices based on that, not on someone else bossing you around and telling you how you should think. So please follow your own heart and your own mind and question everything. That, that is my advice. And be kind to yourself and kind to others if you can. Thank you.